Item number six is consider approval of agreement between the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Department of Rural and Municipal Aid, and the American County Fiscal Court regarding Phillips Road Bridge. That's the agreement for 8020, is what that is. No, that's, yeah, we've already got the bridge, that's just the agreement. Though. Exactly. So I need a motion to approve that. Motion. Second. Mr. Quayle? Yes. Yes. Mr. Fogel. Yes. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Blackman. Yes. yes. Item number seven is consider approval of the second reading and adoption of fiscal year 2019-2020 budget ordinance. Second. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Blackman. Yes. Mr. Fogel. Yes. Mr. Kirk. Yes. Mr. Quill. Yes. Number eight is to open bids on purchasing track loader for the road department. This is the purchase of a track loader. Jimmy, you want to? Looks like we have. You got a pocket knife? I just see one, one bid in here. You got a knife? I got a knife. You need one. Uh, it's from uh, Mead Equipment. This is a 2017 6 dollars 55 k track loader and it is for 150000 dollars 755 what? 655K. K. It's got 1,600 hours on it. They brought out? That I've had it. Track. I've been using it for a month. Probably need to buy that straight out before we are we going back through there. Uh, we'll probably hold on a minute. We're going to look at okay. the, the the other bids on the other the uh, used equipment that we've got, which is item number nine. So we're going to hold off to make a decision before we. Okay. The, the item number nine is to open bids on surplus track loaders from the road department. Uh, so we've got several of those. Looks like. Like there's one, two, it's just two. Let me see. That's all I got. There's two bids on those track loaders. Are they? This is uh, for the 955 L. Uh, this here is from uh, Mead Equipment on the 955. Their bid is $5,500. This here is from Chris Rakes on the 955. He is a county employee and we, we he's able to do that. Just want to make sure that it's a sealed bid, so I just want Is there any bids on the no other? No other bid on the, get one. 
John Deere. So the total on the two would be how much? The, on the 953, John Deere is going to give us $6,500. And it's a total of uh, $12,000 for both of them. But uh, they, have to take both of them they ain't got to take both of them. them. You'll take, take one or whatever. Like he, like he told me, you know, if we can get more out of them, get more out of them. So <coughs> we're probably. Sell the one to the uh, Except the bid from the for Roger. Let me have the other one. Let me have yeah. the other one. Yeah. yeah. I as mean, a trade in. As, as a trade in for the other. Okay. okay. So was the 150 count the trade in? Or no. Okay. No. 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 150 is straight bid price. 150 is 750. was straight out price for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got down here, you know. Yeah. Them that yeah. he'd take. Okay. So that would put yeah. us. So Roger's getting the 955? Roger's getting the 955. Okay. Need a motion to approve the bid for the 955. Motion. Second. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Bishop? Yes. yes. And then we need to accept the bid from uh, Mead Equipment on the 953. The purchase of this one and, and the trade-in. Trade-in. Trade-in on the other one. Okay. Can they all be in the same motion? Uh, we need to make it all back. Yeah. Motion. <laughs> motion to accept the Mead bid on the used equipment and also the price on the straight, straight the new and the purchase of the of the new one provide me meet jimmy specs and all that's what yeah, it, 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 it has. you need a second that's where sell the trade in for both that's where it should put us yeah 137 685 mr quick yes mr bishop yes mr Bowman. yes Yes. 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 You all squared away, I think, everybody's. Item number 10, consider approval to accept bids from Hayden Materials for resurfacing, to accept the bids for the resurfacing road bids that we did at the last meeting. If you remember, we they had already bid it. We just didn't accept it. Didn't approve the bid. So uh, it was for seven hundred fifteen thousand three hundred eighty-five. That's still the, the still the right figures now. Yeah. Need a motion to accept that bid. Motion to accept the bid from the Hayden Materials. Second. Mr. Quill. Yes. Ms. Blackman. Yes. Mr. Curtin. Yes. Mr. Bish. Yes. Okay. Yes. Item number 11 is to open bids for radio equipment that was advertised by the City of Lebanon for the Homeland Security Grant. And, uh, there's the bid on there. It's like we have two bids. Uh, one is from Southern Communications. Uh, for a repeater, and the other one is from uh, Ridge Net Network Group. Uh, you want me to open? I guess I can open. Okay. Yeah. This one is from Southern Communications. And Southern Communications is the company that is providing the current work that we're doing on, on the E911 and everything. So. This is for the microwave. What's this for? This is for the grant for the uh, fifty-five thousand dollar grant that we got. Their bid is for uh, forty thousand four hundred and seventy dollars for a P twenty-five repeater antenna cable and a microwave link. Second one is from uh, RidgeNet Network Group. And 
it is for total saying fifteen thousand thirty dollars. So I'd like to that don't sound I'd like to verify these bids. There's such a difference in it, so I think we need to uh, it's it says uh microwave uh, antenna so I mean we need to to yeah, it's too far off for too far to off twenty five thousand twenty five thousand dollar difference so I think we need to look at them uh, it's, it's from uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know. And check out what the difference in the two would be. Yeah. So see if they're talking about the same same stuff. Maybe that's not installed. <laughs> it's installed. It says it right here. <laughs> it's part of the it's the part of the thing with installation, and it's it's got it on there. So we'll have uh, yeah. We need to check the specs and verify that. Microwave link repeater and related equipment to replace enhance communications with all first responders is what the bid was for. Yeah, so, microwave. yeah. But well, I don't know enough about radios to be able to tell the difference. So we'll get somebody that does. And, this part I don't know. Really. And. Uh, Make a decision at the next meeting. No, I'm touching top. That's why you bid it out. Maybe probably, maybe fifteen's good. I mean, it'd probably be Wes and them at the PD they deal with that. They would have more information. They'd have more information on it. So we'll we'll let them look at it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of difference. I like everything there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess we'll just wait till the next meeting and do that. Item number 12 is to open bids for the roof at the detention center. Uh, Barry, looks like there's several of those in there as well. Blue, yeah, blue tarp not working. Might have been hard on this morning. But What's that? That blue tarp not working. <laughs> blue tarp. We can get you one more tarp and double up. I tell you, it was uh, they had plenty of towels out this morning in my buckets. Funny, you know. Well, it got tested this week, that's for sure. Huh? It's been tested lately, for sure. Ryan Den Roofing. Who? 112. Who was that? What's his name, Mom? Uh, Ryan Den. Roofing, it's out of uh, Berea, Kentucky. This is <coughs> front runner, 105, 144. Even get a piece of the material there, don't you? Got a piece of material there for that. On there, be it. One fourth. Where are they from? Where are they from? Uh, Shelbyville. ACR one commercial roofing. They've got several locations, I believe, on the places. Well, they just gave you a sales bill there. They didn't put it out on the front, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> They got three different uh, three different bids options. They got a sixty-five thousand six eighty-nine, uh, and then they've got an option two at fifty thousand one twenty-seven. Then they got an option another option at 
48989. Sir, did you bid it straight out? Huh? Did you didn't bid it out in the auction? Specs, they just they're they're putting you're going to have to look at specs. You're going to look what versus what you Some did. of them are using a, a, a paint type. This is <laughs> South Central, so that's Terry W. Right? Okay. Pretty tall, huh? South Central at Lebanon, 65000 What I think we need to do is just look at the specs, kind of review these, and then present it back to the court after we measure up. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that, too, I think we had some partial, maybe some partial roof versus a whole roof, maybe. Uh, if, they, if they bid by the specs, we only okay. bid partial. Well, yeah, because there is there is a pretty big... Well, that's why I was wondering. You got such a big difference. There's a big and difference. So we just we one color came in three different bids. Over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Or under sixty or right yeah. Exactly. And he, yeah. And he was bid yeah. partial. And that's why I was wondering if you partial bid it out. And that's and that one company had three options. So yeah. Have different material on each one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, you want to hold those? Yeah. We'll, have, we'll have Daryl. He's got to bid apples with apples. We'll, we'll have to analyze them. Take them and have Daryl go through it. How do you want to do it? I get, we already let. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Barry. All right. Thank you. No action on that. Item number 13, uh, consider approval of budget transfer. There's, Kevin, you want to kind of on the cash transfer? It, it, kind of, it's not the cash transfer. Questions on that? Our total transfer is actually down from what we actually budgeted. Uh, you know, we got a, initially budgeted 680, but then we uh, adjusted the budget. We did the other. Yeah, so it's up, it'll end up being 740 for the year. And it's close to 940. Yeah. Second. Mr. Fish. Yes. Mr. Carter. Yes. Mr. Fogg. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Mr. Blackwood. Yes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a uh, discussion of the county's holiday schedule. Um, I know we've got several different departments that, that work with in a lot of state buildings and uh, like the AOC building across the way and, and the ten detention center and uh, the holiday schedule seems to be kind of different for across the hall you know we're open sometimes they're closed and they're closed and we're open and it it seems to confuse the entire public you know they uh, it, it's I think it's something that we needed to consider all getting on the same page and um, that being the state schedule uh, days on here do we actually change the uh, you get Jimmy, you, you got anything to say? You got anything to say on this? I mean, I know you, we talked about it a little bit. Well, I, uh, you and I spoke about it. And I know, again, it's just, uh, it's, I think it's confusing to the general public when one office is closed versus the other. I do too. Are you okay? Uh, uh, but at the same time, I know it can, uh, when we get into the overtime issues as well, that there, there's some burden on, on budgets for that. So, but again, my ultimate goal, at least from the sheriff's office, is to get something consistent that, that, that we can work on 
but also work together to, to make it come up with a, again, a consistent schedule. Uh, with the mile working with the courthouse, the judicial center, they're on a different schedule. It only really affects one of my employees, but if they're open, uh, it can bleed over into the sheriff's office where additional staffing may or may not be there. So, again, I would love to see us do something uh, a little more solid. Barry? I mean, I'm that way we paint, I mean, I think they're deserving of it. So, I mean, I'm, it, it's going to cost us a little bit on the, on the, uh, the being more consistent. I mean, on my staff, too, I mean, I, I'm open 24-7, but when the state's out, then a lot of my a lot of my business is working with the state when we're moving prisoners and stuff. So, it's, uh, they're out when I'm on those extra two days. So. What's, what's your thoughts on it? And then I see him just looking at this sheet right here. So we currently use President's Day. Yeah. Yes. So if we follow the state schedule, we'd lose President's Day, correct? That's what I was asking. We don't. So would we, if we vote to approve this schedule, so would election day be a work day then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the state needs a holiday. That's not on the call. Yeah. And they give. Is that the one we're looking at? Is the first page? And there's 12 days on this first page. Well, one of the half days, Good Friday is half day. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. But this is the one where Robbie would be thank you. Again, like Barry said, I think people but it's, are deserving if, of it. If everybody's working, you would be, you're just, you know, they're just. I mean, my, my crew is the same. Every, yeah, yeah. They don't matter. That's what I mean. But Premium pay, if they got me working anyway, you're just paying them another half. Time and a half. Time, time, yeah. 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 It would change more Jimmy's than with anybody because you've got two days off of Thanksgiving. You have to catch right. garbage and things. You're not off uh, at Friday and Thursday and Friday on Thanksgiving, <coughs> right? You're just off at Thursday. So it gives you all an extra day off on Friday. That's fine. Every four <laughs> years, leap year cost you anyway. So. I mean, because like Barry and EMS and the sheriff, they all got to cover no matter what anyway. I so think it's done in effect. I mean, we, we're we county employees that work on state systems. So, <laughs> so it's hard. Uh, right. Well, uh, and I, I'm not going to take some of that direction. We need to go. We need to get the line of the state system. I agree 100%. I, I think, think it would. Clear, clarify need. a lot of confusion and things. It, it wouldn't be near as much yeah. confusion and stuff for all the departments so and the public. I think it's a thing to do myself. Would that be this first page here? Yeah. So is this the state schedule, the first page? First page is the state. That's what Kim May goes by. That's what across the hallway goes by. You know, so uh, again, I think getting everybody on the same would if we approve, we already approved one prior, so that this would re replace yeah, it. We could amend it. And the only thing is, the ones that we've already taken was already on there. Yeah. So we're not. Yeah. But I mean, we haven't had. Yeah. So if we approve it now, you'll amend it. We can. Uh, you'll amend it. Then it'll go in effect July 1st. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. yep. I guess that's the simplest way for you. In the motion to approve this holiday schedule effective July 1st. Then what's your motion to approve the new holiday schedule? And the new schedule being effective state state, state, state schedule. schedule. And like, uh, yeah, and to start July 1st. My second. 
Mr. Clue? Yes. Mr. Bishop? Yes. Mr. Black? Yes. Mr. Bover? Yes. Mr. Kirk? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next item is a discussion on abandoning roads. Uh, Jimmy, myself, and Melissa met with uh, with some FEMA representatives. I guess it was was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, and and turned in some uh, uh, estimates and cost of what we've spent on a couple roads that we've turned in for FEMA. Uh, reimbursement and it, it looks it looks pretty promising but uh, we do have one road in particular that that we do need to discuss and that's uh, uh, Medlock Spur it's one that we have closed at the moment uh, it's you know we barricaded it and we actually haven't received any negativity on it uh, the landowners that it's a fact that it affects I don't think they want it open back up. Is that is that pot? I mean, is, is that your feedback, Jimmy? Could be. Could be. Uh, they, so they're not saying nothing about it right now. What I'm trying to say is, there this might be a road that we could possibly discontinue without affecting anybody, and it, it would be less cost to the county. Uh, it's just a gravel road now, so. Uh, like I say, today is just a discussion on it, and. At least I guess the procedure would be the but same as you abandon any other road. You have to have a hearing and and do all that. So now would uh, you, the county can't file the petition? Okay. Okay. Or would they just come up to this and stop the county line? Would they have to their end of it? I mean, we don't have to discuss anything with Tatter County because. If we close our end, theirs is just stop. It. All of our all of our road is in Marion County. Yeah, all of the land slides up is in Marion yeah, County. Yeah, that's what I mean. So if we if we close our side, they could do whatever. They could do whatever they want to. Put a turn around. They could put a cold side. A, a big <laughs> spot in the Taylor County side that is more turn Yeah. Do we have to contact the property owner by letter or anything, or just have uh, a hearing? I mean, I'd say you have to have a hearing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's several other roads that we might could entertain as well. That's why I'm, you know, oh, I'm if they're not being used, maybe we need to discontinue some of them, you know. That's just another expense to the county. Uh, so, again, that's one that we know right now. We closed it and nobody's, I haven't got a call one on it. No. So. The only thing would be is whenever we had that, uh, well, we had to close that. Then a couple of them property owners that I talked to told them what was going on that we was applying for. Yeah. Applying for FEMA grant, and then you know we wouldn't be that. And well, so part of the FEMA process too, as well, is and and nobody. It's not it's, when you do FEMA. Kevin can vouch for it. They want they typically want the road fixed before they, they will. Re and it could be years down the road before you get your money. That's just a chance you take. If you get and your then, money, so that's part of it. And this is one of them. It you could sink, How much sink fifty it? or sixty thousand dollars in it quickly. Fifty six thousand dollars ain't gonna touch it. I ain't gonna touch that road. The, the way the FEMA people looks at it is how many people live on it, how much mm -hmm. the traffic is on it, and it, it ain't gonna fall. I mean, it, yeah. I don't believe they're gonna get some money on it. On a road like that, would you? I know you could take it off of county maintenance, but would it still be an easement or for the people? It'd be a passageway, let's like call it, or well, you know, there's two or three ways you do stuff. Yeah, right. it, Redeed it all. No, I mean, even I mean, if, yeah, you, no, if you didn't, if you if you just took it off of county maintenance and just left it as a passageway, like a lot of them are, the older ones, mm -hmm. it's because somebody's got property or they could still use that as a right-of-way or easement to get to their prop on this side, but it wouldn't be a through road, you know, wouldn't have maintenance sir well that road's going to fall i mean if we don't it, it's 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 not possible it's not possible right now yeah basically took care of itself is what yeah. you know, i mean as far as the the rest of it lisa you're going to have to help us with figuring out what we can do but there's no if if nobody's using fema's not going to help us with it and that I, I think we need to make a decision pretty quick whether or not we spend the money <coughs> to 
upgrade it the way it is and and move forward or or not to do it at all i mean it's that's kind of what i know we've got several that we abandoned and they're they're grown up they can't be used but they're people can still walk them or, or yeah. you know it's not reverted back to the property owner it's still a passageway still a, still a, or something like that still county property or a right of, yeah something yeah, yeah. but we don't no longer maintain it i don't know where yeah. but uh, again like you say they the fema typically wants you to spend the money and then they reimburse you so i mean that's what we've got another road it's, it's 850 feet over here on uh, and we gotta go up there once a week, you know, just just before they get in and out, you know, just to make it before they get in and out. And uh, they was gonna come look at it. And it, that, that that will cost a lot. I roughly estimate half a million dollars. Oh Lordy. <laughs> so I mean I gave his attention up. <laughs> Yeah. It gets to a point <laughs> do, you, do you well anyway, do something else and buy them out. So what I'm saying is we're gonna look into some alternative That's what there's alternative methods to, to see what we can come up with as far as to keep from having to to do this and and nobody's not that many people are using them anyway, so uh, I guess it's what we need to show all all your options out. Yeah. Just find out. Because there's no guarantee you fix it, it's going to stay fixed. No. How many years they've been working on Scotch Ridge, and it's still, <laughs> still, still a bad issue. Yeah. So anyway, I just want to tell you that's kind of where we are with the FEMA money. It looks like we're going to get some reimbursement on a couple roads that were pretty promising. Yeah. Uh, Gene Hunt Road that we've done all the work on. I think we'll we'll probably get it because we've already done the work. It had to be done. And uh, Wheeler Road, we've already fixed it as well. So. Uh, I think those are some that we're going to get, but these other two, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we'll try, but uh, again, we might have to do other methods to save money. So, anybody got any comments or questions on it? Or? I just know the people in the back at Wheeler Road, they was very thankful for the job you done. <coughs> All right.